and I hit the chronograph too. Holy crap! What's up, YouTube? Griever here, and yes, the title description is correct. The most expensive Nerf blaster or dart blaster I've ever bought. I am now a proud owner of a Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. And this thing is really neat. Uh, this review is going to be a little different than I normally would. Um, I'm going to go over everything actually on the workbench because... I want to showcase things as best I can and I feel it would be easier for me to do it on the workbench and I'll explain why in a minute or when I get there. Uh, I will also be doing a FPS measurement because I happen to have now something that actually will do that and I got myself one of these and if you're not familiar with one of what these are, no this is not something I'm actually making, I just put one of my stickers on it. Uh, this is a Saturnus chronograph, which are available on Etsy, and these this thing has been working really well. It's how I've been doing some of my FPS tests when I did the upgrades on the Pork Chop Express, and it's also what I'm going to be using for FPS testing going forward until either A, that dies, or B, I can actually get a proper chronograph, because that's 3D printed, but it works so I'm not complaining so let's go get into that uh, the FPS will be first then we'll do the workbench and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this bad boy okay so we're going to do the FPS test on the Dart Zone Pro 1.1 I have three clips that I'm going to be going through I'm going to be going through five of the bamboo darts that came with it Five bamboo half-length darts along with five worker gen twos that are in the clip as well and this one is only going to be three uh, bamboo half darts along with three worker gen twos I'm waiting on gen threes if I get them before I finish editing this video I'll either add in the FPS test somewhere on the screen or I'll just make a note and just edit in like I would any other little blurb that I usually put but I have the Saturnus chronograph ready to go and we're going to load up the full lengths first so now this has the metal tube in it and I've also gone and decided to kill myself by turning my fan off because I figured it will be easier for you to hear me if that's not right there so, five shots, full length darts. <laughs> I believe that was all of them. Oh, and the drop on that is beautiful. So, yeah, those were five shots and average FPS and everything is right there. I'm going to reset the chronograph and load in the uh, the half lengths. All right, so five bamboo half lengths. And I hit the chronograph too. Holy crap! Okay, so those were the half-length bamboos. Now is going to be the worker darts. And again, just quick reset. Alright, so these are going to be the worker gen 2s. That's still damn respectable. So now I'm not, I'm going to do a quick reset. Okay, so here are the three bamboo half lengths and three worker gen twos in a talon mag along with a uh, worker adapter. The reason I'm not using this one is because 
as I will show in a minute, they actually don't work together. Unlike the Nexus ones, hopefully those will be available on Dart Zone's website to purchase because if that's the case, then I'm just gonna get one of those. This way I don't have to worry about getting a second adapter. But this is just to show FPS readings, not in, not trying to get an average or anything like that, but to show that it can use the other brand magazines. I don't have a Katana mag, so I can't test that. And all six fired without a problem. So, and you saw the readings, they were still pretty much on par. So, gonna go over the workbench now and we'll continue on the review of the Pro. Okay, here we have the completely assembled and definitely used, well, not used, but I put a couple of darts through it, a lot of darts. Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1. So, Going over, before we actually get to the blaster first, I want to tackle these up here because these are the main extra things that kind of come with the blaster itself. So starting off, we're going to actually just talk for a minute about the darts it comes with. Now, these are what the hobby has lovingly decided to start calling bamboo darts because they're green. And also, you can see here, the rings on it make it look like bamboo in case anyone was actually curious. But they come with half lengths and full lengths. Now, the only way you can actually get replacement bamboo darts is through Dart Zone directly. The one small caveat is this though. You cannot buy only full length or only half length. You have to buy them in pairs. I don't know off the top of my head the exact quantities you can get. I know they're 50-50 splits and the prices range and again it'll all be here. The last one I remember seeing is you can actually get a pack of 1440 darts which tantamounts to 720 full length and 720 half length darts which Honestly, it will keep you in darts for quite some time through a number of wars. And that's if you're even working off of the zero return uh, method of you go and you're not com coming back on anything. You're talking at least like two, three wars worth of darts, which honestly are really isn't really terrible, um, depending on the price. But what some of you may also be thinking is looking at this of like... Well, you can see here, it's just the one ring between them. So why can't I just take this full length and just cut it down? No one's stopping you from doing that. But the one thing I would like to point out is this. And this was just something, just one of my observations while like kind of going over everything is the half lengths are actually longer than what a cut down would actually be. So not only that, but if you even look at the rings on the, I'll see if I can just, there we go. If you look at the rings on the half lengths compared to the full lengths, the, the full length, the rings on the full length darts are actually thinner than the ones on the half length. So you could technically cut these down and have a half-length bamboo, but it won't be a proper half-length bamboo dart. Um, but again, that's just my observation on that one. Moving on, if we have darts, we need to put something or need to put those darts into something. It's really hot in the shop and I, I'm sorry, it's, it's a little distracting. But the blaster also comes with one full length clip and one half length clip along with an adapter. I'm going to just go over this one first because there's absolutely 100% nothing special about it. It's a 15 round full length clip. That's red. 
the design is nice it looks very pretty but yeah there's really nothing special about it so this however is what I would say the majority of the hobbyists that are getting this blaster are going to be very excited about and that is the half length dart magazine it comes with an adapter that goes into the pro which works just like any other adapter and i know worker just recently put out a version of the talent adapter that does have a clip release built into it and i'm almost near positive possibly this is almost like the configuration that the jet one uses um it has a additional long lever here so that you're able to release darts and it just goes right into the magazine well and it comes right out very easily now as we saw when i was doing the fps for the darts and everything we know it will take a worker adapter and it will work with talon magazines as far as i know it will work with katana mags and adapters I don't have any, so I cannot test them. So your mileage may vary. Don't hold me to it. But I can tell you for a fact, it does work with the worker talons and the adapter. Now, this is where, unfortunately, we run into a snag, though. While this goes into here totally fine and works no problem, or at least no problem that I've had, we run into a compatibility issue and with the release or the the more recent release of the nexus pro uh because that came out basically the same week i got this the nexus pro adapter can natively take katana and talon magazines which is great because with the inclusion of these that means that adapter is universal it can use basically any of the currently sold on market half-length magazines which is great um however they developed that after the mark 1.1 which i have and this adapter does not accept worker worker talons which kind of sucks but also in the reverse the talon magazines do not accept the Dart Zone Pro magazines. So, at least for me, this leaves me in a conundrum because you can purchase additional half length magazines from Dart Zone's website. And you can even also purchase full length magazines if you really want to. Um, you can even purchase a Full, like a set of three three half length magazines for thirty bucks. You can purchase three half length magazines with half length adapters for them all. For I which I'm not sure of. Again, I'll put pricing up on the uh, screen here. And but now this leaves me in a conundrum because I have the adapter for this, which is fine. Um, you cannot get the red clips or the red magazines on the website as far as i can tell it's any of those ones sold are the orange ones so this now begs the question of what do i do because i have four worker talents so i have four of these i only have one of these but i only have one of these now I know what you're saying. You're like, stupid, that's not a problem. However, because of all the work I have done on the Pork Chop Express, aka my retaliator, that adapter normally does not come out of it. It normally just stays in the magwell in the Pork Chop Express, just being there. Because it's a half dart it's a half dart conversion. It will not fire full length, so and I only have one full-sized half-length mag, so why would I remove it? But, again, 
now I run into the conundrum of what do I do? Because I know this will work in this system. But I don't want to have to keep swapping out the adapter. So I can either pay 10 bucks and just get a second adapter. Or if I was dead set on keeping it at the $30, because that's what will get me three of these, $30 will then get me an adapter and probably two Talon mags. So that would basically mean that both this and the Pork Chop Express can use the same magazines and I would have six now rather than just sticking with four for this and four for that. So it, it's honestly it's going to turn into a, one of those six and one and half a dozen and the other type of things. But let me know in the comments down below what you think I should do. Should I get the Dart Zone Pro magazines or should I just get another adapter and just keep it all worker talons? So let me know. But speaking of that, now getting into what would normally be fired or what the darts would be fired through, and that would be a barrel. Now, I have this barrel right here, so you're wondering what's in here. Well, pre-installed is the metal barrel. So, that's already in here. It comes with a plastic barrel as well. Now, obviously, I have not done any swapping or switching this out. I may, just for science, and I'll put the results in over here as I'm talking about this. I may just for science decide to switch out this barrel with the metal one and run my five full length and five half length darts and see what the FPS on that is. Because if this will help it get down to a good HVZ end war range, then this platform's become even more versatile. But if not, then I know this would basically be a competitive NIC type blaster. And we'll see how that goes. Now to swap this barrel out, what you would have to do is remove these two screws on this side of the barrel, and then these two screws on this side of the barrel, because once you do that, this inset piece here will actually slide out along with the muzzle and you'll be able to then pull out the metal barrel and pop in the plastic one. So I'm going to do those tests off screen um, and I've already posted the results so you've already seen where that is. So uh, yeah, so there's that. Now getting into the actual blaster itself, I'm going to start from tip to stern and just go over everything and what I like, what I don't like. Okay, so we're going to start off here with the stock. Now, the stock in and of itself is, it's a nice design. I like it. The, it does extend and that is full length. It will go and it will hold wherever you set it at, but just note it is very easy to get it caught on something and pull to full length uh, personally i don't mind that because chances are i'm going to have it at full length anyway when i'm using it because that's the way i roll because i'm a big boy um it looks like it does have a point for a sling attachment here which is actually pretty cool and pretty tact tact elite uh in my opinion now I'm just going to take this off for a minute to showcase two things. One, this uh, this stock attachment is, as far as I know, and if anyone wants to correct me, please let me know in the comments below. As far as I know, this is a proper buffer tube attachment point. And you can see here, this is where it kind of sets where it's when, it, when you're setting it. But as far as I know, this is a proper buffer tube attachment. So if you have another buffer style stock attachment that you would like to put on here or stock that you want to put on here not stock attachment this is stock attachment stupid uh but if you have like another thing that you would like that works with buffer tubes this should work totally fine on it i'm 
probably going to wind up picking up a cheap one on Amazon just to try it out myself and see if there is something else I like other than this. But I'll be perfectly honest, this stock is serviceable for me. So, I mean, I really have no problems with it. I like it. It's a good size. Very kind, to me, very reminiscent of the Raider stock, which is my all-time favorite. Now, you will also see here, and I think I have it on back. Yep, I have it on upside down. Uh, this butt pad is actually rubberized. And the reason for that is because it is removable, which is a good thing because behind it is this thing. And finally figured it out. This is a dart unjamming tool. Now, to showcase how this actually works is you remove it from the back there. Nor this does actually come uh, just packaged by itself. You actually put it in there and I'll show you when I put it away. But let's just say, oh my God, there's a jam in, there's a jam in my pro. Prime all the way back so that you have access through one of these windows. What you do is you take your tool and you're actually going to have to try and push the dart out like that. Um, it's probably not going to be the easiest thing. I mean, you can also try and get it from here as well, but that's the way they showed it in the instructions for it. And then once the dart is clear or pushed through or whatnot, pull through and sorry. And once your jam is done to put the tool back, it has a little notch right there in the bottom. Just stick the tool there push in nice and secure and believe me that is very well secured and you just put the butt pad back on and it's good to go just make sure you put this on the proper way um so yeah that's the stock moving forward we have the grip which is very very nice uh it does have a nice rubber piece on it so it does give a very good hearty grip on it especially if you have a sweaty hand because it's hot in here uh so you will be able to get a nice good grip on here and oh god i don't know if that's sweat or if it's just weird oils from the thing anyway um god i hope it's sweat it might be sweat i don't know anyway it does wrap around completely so if you are going to make the decision to open this you're going to have to either A, um, find some way to peel this off, or B, you're just going to have to cut along the seams and just hope it doesn't get all screwed up. Uh, the trigger itself, it's a very nice trigger, a very full trigger, and when, as long as this is up front, you can hear here, it's a very snappy trigger. And I like that. Now, this does come with slam fire. And I'm just going to showcase this for a moment. And you can see here, all I have on here is my thumb. And you get that little bit of travel for the slam fire feature. But then you engage the spring. And you can see here, that's where it's engaging. But if you're in that like kind of slam fire area, the trigger, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, I'm honestly not sure, it becomes weak sauce. Like, it it just, it turns to mush. Like, I've actually gotten it stuck a few times where it's like back there, but thankfully, you know, a little, a little jiggle with the priming handle and it pops back out and you can pull it forward. Because if it's depressed while it's in the slam fire state, it's not going to work. You either have to hold it down completely for slam fire or just let it return and then slam fire. So there's that. You also do have a safety switch here, which safe, fire, and that will wind up obviously letting you pull the trigger and whatnot. And just, okay, my I've noticed this, my safety switch does get stuck from time to time. And I've noticed it's actually if it's actually the trigger itself, if it's depressed in any way, it's obviously not going to catch all the way. Um, but much like Rival, if you have the uh, trigger locked in safe mode, 
you can still obviously prime it. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to keep dry firing this thing. But there's that. So it's there for reasons. Moving on, uh, you may or may not notice, but this does have a bolt sled in it. Here, there we go. It does have a bolt sled, and it's attached basically like any of the um, aftermarket priming handles, uh, like my Gavin Fuzzy or the Worker or the F10 Triple Five. Uh, priming uh priming handles uh just a couple of screws will hold it on however this one is internal so you have thumb screws rather than just the hex heads that the others use and again you will this is some of the small assembly obviously from you saw before that you will have to do it's just these little thumb screws they go right in there which thread right into the bolt sled itself you have your takedown pins you have here you can see and just moving on to the barrel for a moment uh just because i want to kind of move into the aesthetics which again are really nice because there's like so many cutouts in here that look just totally cool here you can see the anodized uh priming handle which is blue in color which there you can see it very nicely uh when the light hits it it just looks white but there you can see the blue there and it just it looks very pretty like with everything it looks very nice you also have cutouts here so you can actually see the metal inner barrel there and you can even see through these bottom holes uh where the piece for the attachment point for the priming handle are now you have one main um clip release lever and that's right here and it works just like the strife the 3d printed uh strife ones you can hit it right from your finger right from there and i gotta say this thing is very very smooth because the magazines just fall right out and it's it's glorious I know I said I didn't want to keep dry firing, and I just did, sue me. Uh, going forward, you have, it comes with these iron sights, which I have to say are nice. Um, it, obviously, they are removable because you have a, as I throw that on the floor, as you can see up here, it has a full, as far as, again, as I'm aware, this is a full Picatinny rail. So you will be able to use any kind of Picatinny sights or anything like that. So if you want to use your own iron sights, a glow sight, a scope, whatever, you can definitely use it on here. I actually have a glow sight from Containment Crew coming, and I can't wait to put that onto it. But, I mean, honestly, for now, these are very serviceable. These work very nice, and they're very robust, too. So I have no problem with it. But that is the kind of up-close portion i guess of the pro that we're gonna go over so i think i've covered everything right now so we're gonna go to my final thoughts and if you haven't figured out by now this is getting high praise okay i'm doing this on my phone because this was kind of like a last minute addition to everything and honestly this does not affect my final thoughts on the blaster, but this trigger spring actually came loose. So it actually forced me to open up the blaster. So here are the internals for the Dart Zone Pro. Um, the spring and catch mechanism are all just one solid piece along with the, uh, the spring rest tube and all that. These are really your only internals, which bolt sled, which actually looks very similar to retaliators, your plunger, your, um, your breech, and down here, just the switch for your safety, your clip release, your trigger, and actually what the trigger hits to activate the catch, which is all in there. So this thing was a pain in the ass to open, but I mean, I got it open, so it's fine. 
The key things you have to take away, and Psych mentioned this in his video, and also thank you, Psych, for the advice on how to get this crap off. But the uh, was the rubberized grip, which I was able to get off in one clean shot, uh, is glued around the upper edges and the lower edges. Now, Psych told me to use some goop to try and put this on. I don't have goop, so I may wind up having to permanently reattach it at a later date. Uh, the other key things are on the top of the buffer tube, you have two clips. Those were actually stupid easy to get off because they were nice and simple. However, the red ring on the back of the uh, buffer tube, that was a pain. And you can see all of the stress marks that I put trying to pry this thing off. Um, this was this and trying to get the grip off without ripping it are going to be the biggest pains in the ass to opening this up. But there you have it, the internals of the Dart Zone Pro, in case anyone is curious. And now we'll go to my final thoughts on this. All right, so my final thoughts on the Dart Zone Pro. And yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's it's a great blaster. It's all right. It's You try and take this from me, I'll break your hand. I love this thing. <laughs> Oh my god, this has probably been the most fun I've ever done and had on a review ever. I mean, I've covered basically everything in the review itself. There's not much more to say about this thing. It's, yes, it is expensive. But for what you get, at least my opinion, totally worth the price. Because, and I'm just going to put this down because it's just going to be easier to talk like that. But, 150 bucks, you're getting something out of the box that has everything you need for HVZ all the way up to competitive, like, nerfing. And, as you saw with the, when I was talking about the FPS ratings and all that and later on when I added in the results for swapping the metal barrel out with the plastic barrel it was you brought it down to a solid HVZ blaster especially if you're using worker darts you hit you are under I believe you are well under the cap for end war so or at least pretty close to it but you'd be able to use this at End War. You'd be able to use this at uh, Cataclysm. You'd be able to use this at APOC. You'd be able to use this at probably um, uh, Ragnarok Toberfest if you know if you were out that way, which I'm sure some of you are. I'm not, but I'm sure there are those. So, I mean, this is a very, very versatile blaster, which I was really not expecting that. But again, going back to the price point, it's 150 bucks, which is, again, a lot of money. But then you take something like my Porkchop Express Retaliator, and you start adding up all the totals, which I'll put on screen here, of what's in there, what the cost is. And if you want to add in, like, time and labor to do all that modding, you know, you're probably hitting about a somewhere between a hundred. You're definitely hitting over a hundred, but so between a hundred and a hundred and fifty bucks for that, and that's tops hitting one thirty. This I was hitting tops at least one eighty. I mean, I don't know what else to say. If you want something, if you want to get into the hobby. I am going to say do it. Do with the hobby what you want to do. If you want to just go to HVZ games, do that. You want to do competitive, do that. You want to do the whole shebang, do that. You want to get something that will get you into doing all of those things with minimal effort put in? This is it. I mean, I'm not saying this is the hobby, that's it, game over. I'm not saying that, because what our hobby is, and 
I may be getting on a soapbox here for a moment. Okay, so I decided to reshoot my soapbox. I took a few days and a few talks with everyone's favorite Uncle Clowny. And what this hobby is, is innovation. If you look behind me, you can see some of that. My Plus Bow, the 4K, the Benelli Magnum, even the Porkchop Express. Examples of bodywork, body kits, built from scratch, paint, all that kind of stuff. But then that begs the question, where or how does the Dart Zone Pro fit into the hobby? Well, the way I see it, and I got a good life out of Kalani out of this, so I hope you guys kind of enjoyed the symbolism and all that kind of stuff, and hopefully I don't piss a lot of people off. But the way I see it, it's almost like cars. And you hear me out. When we go to Goodwill or garage sales and get an old blaster or, you know, go to Walmart or Target and pick up, you know, something brand new off the shelf, it's like getting an old Junker or, you know, a Honda Civic or a Subaru and just restoring it or tuning it or, you know, putting a body kit on it or whatever. So then, what is the Pro? The Pro is like a luxury car. You don't buy a BMW or Maserati thinking, hmm, how do I mod this? You get a luxury car because it's fun, exciting, and you want to enjoy it. And that's what this is. And that's where I see it fitting into the hobby. Now, is this going to be for everyone? No, of course not. But that's fine. Not everyone does full out like super builds like a plus bow or you know trying to get like super high performance like you know a strife with like three afterburners in it or something like that but that's what we do the hobby will always in be be innovation it will always innovate we will still come up with mods, we'll still do builds, and I'm sure somebody is going to take this thing and mod the ever-living hell out of it just because they can. And that's totally fine, but that's what I love about this hobby. And the fact that we could take something, enjoy it for what it is, or we can just do anything to it and either prove upon it or kill it and throw it into the garbage. But that's why I love what we do, so... Thank you all for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> but seriously, that's the end of my soapbox. And I know this review was not what I normally do. And I do have my Saturn review coming. That's going to go back to kind of the normal format of this. But the Dart Zone Pro was... It's something, it honest to God is something special. So that's why I kind of went a little off script and surprisingly for once actually on script for some of this. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. And please, as always, if you enjoy our content, and I really did hope you enjoyed this video, please throw us a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Dart Zone 1.1. And are you planning on getting one of the Nexuses? Did you by chance get the original Pro, the one of the one of a thousand? Uh, please let me know in the comment down below. And oh, don't forget to hit that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing stuff here on the channel. But again, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later.